right, guys, here we are back to the garage. Welcome back to Motor Mouse Garage. So today, what we got going on, we're going to tear apart this short block. Now, I'm not going to be reusing this short block for my own purposes. Uh, I actually ordered a brand new factory short block from Toyota that is going into the 80 series. So, but what we have to do is we have to take the timing cover off. That needs to come off. Uh, we need to take the oil pan off and all the parts that we're going to be reusing that aren't coming with the new short block. So not only that, but I'm curious to see what these bearings look like. I'm curious to see what uh, these pistons look like. So I'm going to be taking all that out as well and inspecting this block. And I might even take a couple measurements just to see if the cylinders are out of round or, you know, how out of round they actually are. Um, so... That's what we're going to be doing today, primarily. Uh, I've got more content coming out, but this is probably going to be its own video. Um, and it's just going to be me looking at stuff with you guys, pretty much. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys. So I'm going to start by trying to get this crank pulley off. Now, um, I already took the flex plate off of this vehicle. so. I'm not going to be able to use the trick where, you know, you attach a wrench to like one of the uh, one of the bolts for the flex plate and to torque converter and you attach the other to like the engine stand mount or another um, mounting surface so it stops the entire engine from rotating. Matter of fact, I'll show you how to do that. So normally what you would do is if the flex plate was still on but it's not, it's over here somewhere in this mess. Um, you'd still have this on, so you'd have this giant wheel right behind here. And what we, you would do is you would stick a, a wrench in one of the flex plate mounting bolts for um, the bolts that go through to the torque converter. So from this side, uh, the ones that we were taking off down here when we split the engine, uh, I know I showed that to you guys when we were splitting it apart. Um, and then you would attach it to like something like here, or maybe you'd put a nut and a bolt through here. So you'd have one wrench, even you could use this dowel. So the open end would go here and the closed end would go on the torque converter. And basically it would just stop this engine from rotating. Well, I've already taken that off, so we can't do it that way. So what I'm gonna try to do is use my half inch impact to get that crank bolt off. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is on here with some pretty serious force. So I don't even know if this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, we're going to have to figure something out how to hold this engine or keep this engine from rotating. So this might, this crank pulley might have to come off later, but let's see how this goes. Oh yeah, she's, uh, she's on there guys. So let me, uh, let me brainstorm this to figure out how I'm going to get this off, uh, in an easier way. <laughs> All right. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to flip this engine over and then basically get the oil pan off so I have access to the actual crank itself and just wedge something in the crank balancing lobes uh, to stop this from rotating. And then we can take the crank pulley off and I can get the timing cover off and everything else like that. So let's try that. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I also don't know if this is gonna make a huge mess. I think we should be mostly drained, but you know, Good chance we might not be. Got some coolant coming out. Really glad that I kept this drain pan under here. All right, not too terrible. Let me get this uh, locking pin in here. All right, so we're just gonna start taking the oil pan off. I'm pretty sure we can get everything off without the crank pulley removed. So let's start with this oil pan. These are just 10 millimeter bolts for this bottom sump. Uh, I'll probably I'm either going to look to reform this or possibly get another one entirely because this 
has definitely seen a rock or two in its day. Note to self, make sure I get skid plates when I get a new pan, because uh, there was no skid plates on this, so I think that's what this crushing portion came from. Let's uh, try to pry this off, this bottom oil sump. I don't think it's going to be too bad, because like I said, these bolts weren't super tight. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Jinx myself. It's funny because this thing was leaking like a banshee from here, from this oil pan. I think it was the upper oil pan though, if I'm being honest. Because there's definitely no shortage of RTV on this side. I might have to get Bertha out for this. So I don't have like a medium sized pry bar. Otherwise, I would just use that. Ideally, if, I think I'm just gonna buy a new pan, but you want to be careful when you're removing this so you don't warp the pan or bend it, so you don't go crazy if you're removing this. Boy. But in our case, I'm going to be replacing this pan because you can see this was definitely hit right here. I don't know if you can see this has obviously been dented in. This isn't normal. It should look like this side, I'm assuming. But you can see it took an impact from something right here, a rock most likely. Uh, and it kind of just crumpled this section. So I'm going to be getting a new one because, uh, yeah, I don't want that to interfere in any way. But if yours is not broken like that, then I highly suggest that you uh, be very careful when you're taking this off. Not to bend it up too much. It's going to get a little warped or bent a little bit. By the way, my dog got a hold of this a, a while ago. And... Uh, ruin that, but it's fine. By the way, a flathead screwdriver is not the right tool to do this, but it's the only one I got, really, that's strong enough. Actually, do I lie? I have this, this little, uh, little putty knife right here. It's probably not perfect, but Actually, it is perfect. Let's see, she's on here, guys. I guess they were trying to make up from the upper oil pan leak with the lower oil pan. There we go. We're free. Oof. Okay. So yeah, this is definitely, oh, there's some, there's some chunky bits in here, guys. I'll sit this to the side and I'll show you guys a little bit later. Actually, I'll just show you right now. So I'm hoping you guys can see there's like a nice little mess of chunkiness right here. Um, it's either plastic or metal. Kind of looks like plastic. Let's see, let's see if it's magnetic. Let me grab a magnet. So the end of this is magnetic. Okay, no. Uh, no, these are plastic. Okay, probably like timing chain guides or something. Either way, not cool, not great. That's gonna get cleaned. Well, that's gonna get replaced. I'm just gonna replace it. But you can see there's like chunks of RTV just everywhere in this oil pickup. Wow. Wow. This is why you don't use an excessive amount of RTV on your engines because this happens. I'm going to take off this sensor. This is like a crank sensor, I think, uh, just to get it out of the way. I don't want to break it coming out because I'm pretty sure... They're probably not cheap, um, but let's just get that out of the way. So I believe this is the crank position sensor. Uh, I'm going to leave these bolts right here for the time being. 
Let's pull this out. I don't know if you can damage this if you don't take it out, so I'm just gonna be safe and take it out. A lot of grossness going on here. I'm hoping this just pulls right out. Yep. Yeah, so this is a crank position sensor, it looks like to me. Yep, crank phasers right there. So this will get a new gasket. I've got a whole new gasket set, so. Yeah, because that's basically hard plastic now. All right. I'm going to put these nuts back on so I don't lose them. And I'm going to put this in our bottom man box over here. Oh, dude. It's gross, man. Gross. Like, all this stuff's going to have to be cleaned. Let's get all these lower oil pan bolts off, or upper oil pan bolts off, so we can get this thing apart even more. This is one complaint I do have about Toyota is it uses like every size bolt between 10 and like 17. Like, could they not just stick with a few, like two? We should be good to start Prying this up a little bit. There's some pry areas that Toyota graciously left for us. I think we got all the bolts out. I'm just gonna go really slow because I don't know how this pickup comes off. And it's like, I don't know if it comes off as one unit or like, is it still attached? It's gotta be attached to the oil pump somewhere, right? So do I have to take that front cover off for the oil pump first? I don't know. Some exploratory Surgery. Again, being very careful. I'm still planning on reusing this oil pan, so I would like to not destroy it. We're not moving, guys. I'm kind of nervous. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna check out the uh, FSM, see what that's got to say. I might have to take apart this oil, oil pump first, but I'll be right back. All right, guys, according to the FSM, it actually does say to use a screwdriver. Who knew? So there's specific spots, like right here is one where a screwdriver goes in. But man. He's in there, boys. And girls. I think we're gonna have to use, just use Bertha and rip this guy off. Cause I'm gonna break my screwdriver if I pry on this. All right, got some movement. Ah, there we go. Now we're pretty much home free. Do the same to this side. There we, and there we go. All righty then. A lot of grossness in here. Set this over underneath the 80 series for right now. So now, we're at the meat and potatoes here. Oh, I don't I actually don't think it was a crank seal that was leaking. I think it was the upper oil pan. So this is the stuff that happens when you have when you use too much RTV, like entirely too much. 
you don't want to do that because it actually can cause even more leaks than previously. <laughs> so uh, be sure to follow the recommended amount because all this excess stuff ends up in your engine and then you will eventually end up doing this. So sometimes what works, I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but running a bead across everything and then flattening it out with your finger and getting a lot of the excess off all the way around here, which I'll show you I'm gonna do when I put back together. Uh, that way we kind of know how to do this, or you guys know how to do this. So again, some people say, oh, you just leave the bead and you just squish it down. Like, well, when you do that, you get nonsense like this, and then you potentially ruin the engine because this gets clogged in oil filters, uh, strainers for the oil pickup tube, which we already saw. So yeah, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't be this, don't be this kind of guy. Now for the part that we were trying to do to begin with was take this crank pulley off. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shove, basically just stop this crank from rotating and shove something in here, like a screwdriver, probably a chisel, just so we can stop this thing from rotating past a certain point. Um, again, I bought a short block assembly from Toyota, so I'm not necessarily going to use this crank, but I might, I might. Like I said, I might want to give this thing away. So Lefty Lucy is going to spin the engine this way. And what I would like to do is wedge this kind of in here somewhere. I don't know where. I'm still looking for a spot, guys. What I could do is just do this. Put this up underneath here. Like so. And then rotate it back. There we go. Okay. I'm hoping that this doesn't slip out and cause me to do some sketchy things. Oh, oh boy. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is on there, boys and girls. So, I think now it makes sense to move this basically giant pan full of disgustingness uh, out of the way so that in the event that I lift this thing up, it's not going to spill all over my garage and defeat the purpose of the entire drain anyway. All right guys, I was off camera, but I got it with a pneumatic that I had and like a two gallon air compressor that was all the way filled up. So just glad I was able to get it that way. Just goes to show, that no matter how strong your electric is, pneumatic is still pretty damn good. So hopefully that won't turn on us again. So let's, now I can use my electric to get it the rest of the way off, but I'm sure people would have been like, oh, Milwaukee could have got that off. I'm like, well, you're probably right. I don't have Milwaukee, but dude, look at the size of this thing. So I tried to break it with my breaker bar and almost flipped my engine stand. So uh, don't recommend trying to do it with a breaker bar. But luckily, also, I noticed that this pulley, this is supposed to be a press fit, dude. So I don't know if I should replace this. Hey, if you know in the comments about 80 series, it says to use a special tool to get this pulley off, but I just pulled mine right off. So if I need to replace this harmonic balancer slash crank pulley, whatever it is, let me know and I'll do it. Because if, if you're like, you know, Toyota technician that is very familiar, even if you're not, even if you're just really familiar with these engines, um, just let me know because it came right off. Like no, 
no, no fighting whatsoever. It just slid right off. I don't know if that's common or are these supposed to be press fit on there? So if you know, please let me know. Otherwise I'll just reuse it. All I did was I placed this chisel punch underneath the crank so it couldn't rotate to the left. Uh, and the crank has some like little lobes underneath of it. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's got like a little hook and it was perfect and it didn't damage anything here. So pro tip, um, if you got the oil pan off, I'd probably use this, something like this to get it off. But we got that taken care of. Um, also, you could just use pneumatic like I ended up doing. Thank God for pneumatic impacts. So now what we got to do is we got to tackle this oil pump gear cover thing, which sucks because I do have some bits that fit in here, but I don't know how bad these are going to be basically. So I'm a little worried about them. I can extract them. It's not that big of a deal. If they are magnetic, I could weld a nut to them and just take them off because I have replacements for it. So I've got that whole wits end um, timing cover oil leak kit that they've got. Excellent products. Dude, wits end has been a savior on this build. Like, I don't know what I would have done if there was no wits end, to be honest. So uh, I don't remember your name from the owner of wits end, but you and your wife keep doing the Lord's work for 80 series owners, man. Please, I found a bit that looks to be at least close. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hammer this into the, the, the bits and then I have this really long quarter inch like bit driver thing from uh, Easy Red. I don't know if this thing's gonna be strong enough. I don't know how crazy these little bits are in here. going to give that a good whack, set my hammer down, and let's hope that this thing is strong enough to be able to uh, break them loose. Oh yeah, no problem. No problem at all. All right, so I'm just going to repeat that for all of the oil pump cover bolts, and then I need some kind of drainage tray under here. I don't want to use that big thing. That needs to get drained. I, I drained most of it, but there's still quite a lot. So let me get a bucket. That is victory, my friends. Okay, so now we can just get off here with a screwdriver, now that they're all Broken loose, again, this is just a generic. This isn't like the JST one, I don't think. This is PH3, it looks like. I know you guys probably can't see that because it's super dark. Uh, it says PH3 on it. Hope you can pick that up. And then this is just an easy red. Uh, those of you who have seen a tool truck before, you know, these are everywhere. These are worth their weight in gold. I've used these for many situations like that. And it always, it never fails me. All right, so now, oh, let's grab just a normal screwdriver and we'll just get all these out. I just realized like I probably have that parts kit from Wits End that replaces all of these for like uh, hex bolts and I have the correct bit and everything. It's just in my parts room and I totally forgot about it. Pretty sure this is an idler pulley. Well you've seen this before. If you watch my other videos you know the deal with that. Oh boy. Yeah this is a this gasket's trash, dude. Gasket's trash. We'll just throw it in there for right this second. Um, God, dude. It literally takes like 
Like, this is the cheap stuff, dude. Like, it really bothers me because whoever failed to maintain this vehicle, and the previous owner, like, he straight up told me, he was like, dude, I've only had this for a couple months, and it's just expensive. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, but whoever owned it before him, like, you're, you're, you're cheaping out on the stuff that's, like, cheap to fix. Like, it doesn't cost that much time and effort to to get the the crank pulley off in the vehicle it's even easier because you don't have to worry about flipping your engine sand but it's just like guys just do the maintenance bro like just do it even if it's not like a cool car or whatever just maintain your cars it's not hard i'm hoping this oil pump isn't like super screwed i think we should be okay Let's look at getting all these timing cover bolts off. There is the timing cover and the water pump gear just fell out. No, oil pump, sorry, not water pump, oil pump. Now we can take this guy off. This can come off, this timing chain can come off and get tossed because we're not replacing that. Or I mean, we are replacing that. Here's a little crank sprocket. Oh, here's the drive for that oil pump. It's interesting. I like seeing all this. So this is trash. I'm gonna throw this over here. That way we're just not even tempted to use it. Might be able to use it for something else. This would be a good oil filter wrench thing. I might keep it. Let me hold on to this thing. Yup. Dude, this is a hefty guy. It actually looks in pretty good shape, all things considered. So we got to get this guy out. Uh, here, this seal has been replaced. It's not all plasticky. There's, I don't know what that's for. That is terrible. I mean, either way, we're not using this bottom end anymore. So I can guess I can kind of leave it like this. We're probably gonna need this, uh, but the cranks need gotta come out. We'll probably need this gear. So I'll take that out. This probably gonna need it. I'm gonna assume the new block doesn't come with one. This one I might need as well. I'm gonna take that out. Pro tip, don't drop these, because uh, you can probably bend these pretty easily. All right, and then there's the gear for the oil pump that we're definitely going to need. It's looking like these journals are really good. Luckily, no failure here. Um, and these are actually looking pretty decent, too. They don't look super worn out, so that's good. All right, guys, let's get this... Uh, Let's get these rods and pistons out of here. Just out of curiosity's sake. Mm. So what I like to do here is I'll loosen them a little bit and then I'll grab a trusty hammer, put the socket on the nut, just give them a little tap, separate them, and then I'll get the blunt end of a hammer. So this, well first, let's get the, the cam cap off. Take a look at these bearings. I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm curious, dude. 245,000 miles. What do these bearings look like? Bearing state on the crank here. The backside looks pretty good. Minus, of course, we also have to remember that it did have a head gasket failure and there's definitely oil or like milky soupy oil in the um, 
in the bearings because it's inevitable. Okay, so let's just push that out a little bit. There we go. It's sticking to the bearing, not like in a bad way, or, or the journal rather. So let me get something clean and I'll show you guys. Ooh, uh, not terrible. I've, dude, I've seen way worse. There's actually some pits in here, but here. So this is the cylinder one bearing. So you can see there's some wear on that outside edge there. It's not perfect. It looks like there's some pitting going on, but overall, dude, for that many miles, you, you can't complain at that point. bring this journal to the top, which is why I need this crank pulley bolt. There we are. So we got piston number one, some crazy, well not crazy, I've seen worse, so definitely some side skirt wear on this side. The rings are still free. I can't wait to check out these bores, dude. That's what I really want to see. Check out these bearings. So, a little bit of wear, but I think you would expect a lot more from 246,000 miles, 245 roughly. Not too terrible. And we're just gonna go in order, just because I wanna. No particular reason. Okay. Not terrible. All right. So, oh, dude, this one looks nasty. This is definitely encroaching on spun bearing um, territory right here. So I don't know if you can see, there's like a deep gouge, like my, my fingernail catches on that. So I'll show you the bearings when it's all done in some better lighting, but oh yeah, this uh, cylinder two is looking pretty, pretty beat up. I don't know if you can see some of the Trying to wipe the shine off a little bit. Some of the scoring, vertical scoring on the skirt, on the piston. You never want to see that. Not too bad, but definitely not something you want to see because it'll damage your cylinder walls, and that's not good. And that's not good. Let's see what the the crank journals look fine, luckily. So this is, uh, dude. It got a little hot. It's. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if that's just discoloration from lack of maintenance or from heat, but you can see in this bearing too, perhaps there's like a gouge in here as well. That's not good. It's very much uh, problematic. bearing stayed in and looks much better than the last one we took out. I know I'm not supposed to be using a dirty rag to wipe bearings off, but they're dead anyway, guys. So this one, not nearly as bad. That's cylinder number three. Let's uh, get this piston out of here. Again, pretty much the same story on this side. A uh, little bit of wear on the skirt. You can see a little bit of vertical scoring on both sides. Rings move pretty freely. Oil control ring moves pretty well. Should probably do this on camera. She's burning some oil, but it's not terrible. 
It's not like a Subaru or anything. <laughs> just, just kidding, guys. Kind of. I laugh because a lot of my friends own Subarus. Um, fun cars. I used to have one. Let's see what we got. Looking fine. First glance, it was really cylinder two, man. Cylinder two was getting beat up. Either way, if one was bad, this was worth taking apart for sure. So we know, so we come back with knowledge. But yeah, cylinder four. So far, the only bad one was cylinder two. There's some water in this bearing. <laughs> So it was totally mixing. That's probably why cylinder two was a mess. So again, this one's a little pitted, a little bit. Some light scoring, light wear. Again, just vertical scoring. Oh, this oil control ring is seized though. Oh, not seized, it's just a little gummed up. Not moving as much as it should, I don't think. There we go. Okay. Just old. Mm, another one that doesn't look too great, guys. So two and five seem to have been having issues. Again, you can see like the double like scoring there. I'm trying to angle it so you guys can see. And so I can see. But yeah. Definitely some wear there. Not too great. Very gross. Very gross indeed. There's a lot of soupiness in here. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, controllings rings look good. That bearing looks absolutely hammered. Not hammered, I've definitely seen worse. But it's not great. I'll show you guys. Let me clean this mess up. But again, you can see it maybe some really deep scoring, like fingernail deep. So it's not good. The correct amount of scoring you want to see is pretty much none. So number five was a gross one. I think number six is going to be a gross one as well. Uh, yeah, pretty bad. Not, again, I've definitely seen worse, but this is really bad. This was like... Very, very scored, very, very pitted. This was the cylinder with the misfire and the blown head gasket, so I would imagine it's going to be pretty gross. But I don't know if you can see. This is like some fingernail deep scratching here. I can feel it through my glove. So it's pretty, pretty not good. Man, to think, I was just going to replace a head gasket on this. Oh, boy, would that have been a mistake. Last one, that thing was full. Oh yeah, this bearing is trash. Not good. Not good at all. Oh, even the rod has some really bad heat transfer on it. That's not good. This was about to spin for sure. Jesus. This thing's days were numbered for sure. So. Here's the rod half. You can see super deep gouging. And on the other side of this bearing, um, there's actually some heat transfer on the rod itself. So this thing got pretty pretty hot. So the, the outside of the rod looks fine as far as a heat standpoint. So it didn't fully spin, but it wanted to. That's for sure. These rods are pretty stout, dude. Also, I noticed on cylinder 5, the wrist pin was a little... Little uh, 
less free moving than all the other ones, which is what connects the connecting rod to the piston, for those of you that aren't aware. All right, guys, so this is going to be basically the cylinder inspection. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be taking the crankshaft out of this, um, at least not for right now, because as you can probably tell in the background with all this stuff over here, um, I've got a lot of stuff going on in the garage right now. Um, I'm also repairing some stuff on my Forerunner, which will be a video a little bit later, but I wanted to show you guys the cylinder walls in this video specifically because I've been looking at it for a little while and I'm sure some of you can see right now um, how some of the wear is looking um, for these cylinder walls. So I got some improved lighting so this is this is quite some time later but I wanted to have something I'm gonna have some decent lighting for you guys that way uh, you could actually see what the heck is going on because I realized in my last video it wasn't exactly the best lighting ever um, so I'm going to take this camera by hand and we're going to take a look at these cylinder walls starting with cylinder number one over here. So this is the first cylinder, this is the front of the engine, you can tell by this timing cover. Um, but you can see there's definitely, there's some cross hatching left, um, but there's absolutely some wear. So you can see that like dull spot right there. So that's where the side skirt of the piston um, started to wear and even on the sides right here so we've got some vertical scoring here very light it's not anything like detrimental um, but definitely not something you'd want to see on an engine that you want to run so I'm actually surprised there is like relatively decent cross hatching here um, and cross hatching is basically those those uh, diagonal scratches. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Let me take the light away a little bit. But those diagonal scratches you can see on the cylinder wall. That's called cross hatching, and that's supposed to be there by design, and that's what keeps the oil in the cylinder bore. So here's cylinder two. So I did notice there was some, you know, light surface rust, but I think that's just from it sitting for a little while. Again, you can see where pretty much in the same spots. Uh, cylinder two piston down here, down there we got a rod journal that's looking pretty good. So, so far, I think the crankshaft uh, is looking pretty good and that's good news. Um, here, there's some pretty, basically all the cross hatching in these darker spots in the cylinder wall is, is gone. So it's just smooth, uh, smooth bore right now. So that's cylinder three. And then we have cylinder four. Let me move my camera stand out of the way for a second. Cylinder four, um, some surface rust from, from it sitting here. I don't think that's, uh, that was obviously not the case when this thing was running, but you can definitely see, sorry, I'm trying to do this with like one hand, but you can definitely see like this is a little bit of surface rust, but for sure, there's uh, some cross hatching, cross hatching that's essentially missing. Um, and again, cylinder five, more of the same story, just some smoothing out of the cylinder. So it kind of, to me, um, granted, you know, I'm not really an expert um, when it comes to building engines. You know, I can do it, but. You know, someone that runs a machine shop could probably tell you more about this than I can, to be honest. But to me, it kind of looks like they might be slightly out of round, potentially. And then, of course, we have cylinder number six. Again, a little bit more smoothing. Um, so a little bit more vertical scoring. Like here, you can definitely tell. And I can see that you can see it through the camera. See those vertical lines caused by the piston? So that's not something you really want to see um, in the cylinder bore. Um, but yeah, so this is what we're looking at for cylinder six, which was the cylinder with the failed uh, portion of the failed head gasket. And yeah, so that's that's kind of what our cylinder bores look like. Again, 
not too terrible. Um, I might I might show you guys the the main bearing journals for the crank, but to be honest, um, I really don't want to take this out, take that crank out because one, I don't want it to get damaged, and two, um, I really have I have nowhere to put it. So you can see, I've got my garage closed right now, but I've got like a mess of stuff going on. So I'm also doing. I'm also filming a repair that I'm doing on my Forerunner. I'm doing the control arm bushings, which is taking a lot longer than I had wanted. But that's what we have for the bottom end. So overall, I think that this bottom end is looking pretty decent. You know, obviously I'm, I'm glad that I'm going with a, a new short block um, and I'm glad I tore it down to this level because who knows how long this would have ran. As you saw with the rod bearings, um, it was only a matter of time. We were on borrowed time um, for those rod bearings. And, you know, again, this engine did have 245,000 miles on it. So not too bad, not terrible for that amount of mileage. You know, I've, I've seen worse. I've seen a lot worse at a lot lower mileage, obviously. But, so that's pretty much gonna do it for the engine teardown portion of um, this, series. So obviously we still have um, putting everything back together. I still need to basically redo, reseal all of those parts back there in the intake manifold. So all that's got to get taken apart. I'm also going to start rebuilding the harness. Um, I have to go through and look at every connector that's damaged. So I've got quite a few damaged connectors. So I'm going to buy them separately and I'll show you how to basically depin those. I'll show you how to repin them and kind of keep track of everything. Um, and I want to get rid of some of like the crusty stuff on the harness to begin with because it's, it's kind of a mess. But that's going to do it for the engine teardown portion of this. If you have any questions, uh, hit them, put it in the comments. And of course, uh, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, and check out the description for some information on Amsoil products or if you want to leave me a don donation, whatever the case may be. Um, but with that being said, till the next one, guys, peace out. Have a good one.